Hello everyone and welcome to How to Build a Customer Journey Map presented by Experiment Nation. This is the final piece that brings together your customer research. So, have you been using customer journey maps in your research? Here's my big secret. I haven't used them until really like late last year, December 2021. And if you're like me, you probably conducted tons of research, presented the research to your client or team, and expected everyone to get it just because you and your team did it. But let me tell you, just because you put that PDF together does not mean that everyone is going to get it in the same way that you get it. And so now what we do is we use this tool called the customer journey map and it gets everyone involved. And now everyone feels like they have a part in the research. Here's a little bit about myself. I've been designing um, websites and building websites since 2001. I currently teach usability research at the new school in New York City. I run an e-commerce conversion focused design and development agency called 92 Dream. And I've worked with brands such as OpenSky, Gurkha, Zachary Perel, Atmos RX, Sean John, and Kind of Beauty. Here's what we're going to go over today. We're going to define what a customer journey map is. We're going to define what your customer persona is. We're going to build a customer journey map. We're going to understand how to conduct a con a customer journey map workshop and we're going to understand what to do next so take out your pens and pads people because you're going to want to take notes what is a customer journey map and why is it important so i'm going to go into detail about how to build a customer journey map but let's get the logistical stuff out of the way right a customer journey map is a visual display of the journey that a customer goes through when they experience your website and or product or service it ties in all of the customer research that you're already doing, and it's a great way to get buy-in from everyone involved with the website. It takes you away from just understanding the pains and problems of your customer and actually puts you in the driver's seat of the customer, right? So you actually feel those pains and problems of your customers. It's a great way to come up with innovative ideas that your competitors would never think of. It's a great way to think of ways to delight your customers and different ways that you can improve your experience as you go through this customer journey map. It's the most empathetic part of your research because it involves seeing the, the current experience from the lens of the customer. So let's talk about that customer a little bit. Before you dive into creating the customer journey map, you first want to create the customer persona. You should focus on just one customer persona at a time. Don't focus, all, don't go, don't focus on all your customer segments. You don't want to focus on two to five or six or seven different customer segments because it makes it a lot harder re to refer back to when you're talking about these different segments or different customer personas throughout your customer journey map. So what you're going to want to do is just focus on one persona per journey map. You also don't want to use generic demographics for your, for your persona. You want to use the data that you have to create a story. So instead of saying something generic like, hey, Sarah is a dental hygienist that loves her kids. Instead, you can say, Sarah wakes up every day motivated to get to work to help people with their dental hygiene. Her three kids are her life's focus and everything that she does in life, she does for them. You can see how this sounds a lot more interesting and informative than the generic way. So when you're creating your persona, you're going to need the following um, in that persona. You're going to need a name, an image, the bio, a quote, the brands that this customer is following, behaviors, goals, and pain points. Let's talk about each of these um, a little bit in depth. So the name, it needs to be real. Don't use a celebrity name like Kim Kardashian. Don't use shortened names like JT Smith. What you want to do is actually use a real name. It's going to help you refer back to that persona. You're going to start saying things like, hey, Sarah should have done this. Or if I was Sarah, X, Y, and Z, right? So you want to make sure that you are talking about an actual person that you can refer back to. It helps keep empathy at the forefront, all right? So let's talk a little bit more about Sarah. Image. Again, you don't want to use a celebrity. You want to use a real person. Do not use an avatar or a cartoon. You want someone that represents your target persona's age and gender or any other demographics that you find in your research. Bio. All right. So based on your research that you've already conducted, you want to 
use a blend of personal and professional data points, right? So be sure to tell a story about your persona. So this goes again with the story that I said earlier. Sarah works at the local dentist's office as a dental hygienist. She loves working with the kids that come into the office. She's very organized and loves to have everything in order. Sarah has three kids of her own and a husband, so she doesn't have a lot for personal time. You're also going to want to add a quote to your customer persona. This describes their motivations, typical behavior problems. So a quote that we came up with here is, I know my life seems busy, but I keep my family and myself well organized so we don't ever miss a beat. That's a great quote for Sarah. Brands. You want to use the data that you've collected to include a pattern of the brands that came up the most. These brands as context and trigger empathy when referring back to that persona. You're going to now know that this persona, she likes Whole Foods, she likes Burlington Coal Factory, she likes Zara, she likes to use Uber when she's going out, and she likes MAC Cosmetics. Behaviors. These are the behaviors that the persona may take on on a daily basis. So a behavior might be um, she follows trendy blogs to keep up with fashion tips and better ways to organize as a parent. She loves to get away and spend time with a good book at the local coffee shop. These are behaviors of your customer persona. The goals of your customer persona, right? And again, you're finding the patterns through your research to come up with these goals. So um, she manages a large family. She enhances organization strategies. She continues to build and scale her business, right? So these are the things that are most important to your persona's goals and her aspirations. Um, this helps align your product and services with exactly what the goals of your persona are looking for, right? So what is it that your persona is looking for? These are the goals that they're looking for. This is what they aspire to be. So let's talk a little bit about the pain points. It's important to understand your persona's pains and problems. This is something that we've always done in our research. Every single time you do research, you look for the pains and problems of your target audience. So before and after they use your product and services, what sorts of pains and problems are they using? Are, are they undergoing? What sort of things frustrate your persona? Once you understand what frustrations your persona is going through, you can better understand the user experiences for them. This is where innovation lives. This is how you can start to delight your customers. So one pain point that Sarah is feeling is that um, her daily life can be busy and it's hard for her to find time to care for herself. So a few things you want to look for when you're conducting this persona exercise is you want to survey your customers for all of this information. Um, you want to make sure you go through and survey them either um, in person or just do a regular form survey. The more data you collect on your customer, the better you can fill out their persona. And you want to conduct customer interviews to understand their personality traits. You want to look for patterns in your survey data and you want to refresh this persona once per year. All right. Now here's a sample of the persona that we just built, right? So her name is Sarah Gonzalez. She has behaviors that um, she follows the trendy blogs. She shops at Whole Foods and Zara, MAC Cosmetics. She has a busy life. Um, she's well organized, so she doesn't want to ever miss a beat. And she works as a dental hygienist, right? That's her bio. She's a dental hygienist. She loves kids. She loves the kids that come into her office. And she loves to help her out her people, right, her community. All right, and so now we want to build your customer journey map. First, you're gonna to need to understand the goal of your customer journey map. Is it gonna be general or is it gonna be specific? I will start with general because general is going to go through each and every phase at a higher level. Specific is gonna talk about something specific within that um, general customer journey map. So something specific might be the, ad, the customer journey of um, an ad, right, or an email. Something like that would be more specific, but we want to talk about the general customer journey in this first map. And this is the map that you want to get everyone involved in. And so the way you do that is you start with a customer journey map workshop. In the next phase, we're going to uh, figure out the stages and then the layers of empathy. It all starts with the workshop, right? So. Whether it be two two-hour sessions or one four-hour session, it's all up to you and your team. You have to gauge your team to see how everyone reacts to the one four-hour session. That might work for everybody, but two two-hour sessions usually works for most people. 
Be sure to invite everyone who works on the website, such as the CMO, the head of customer service, the head of sales, the product and dev teams, even the founder. You want to get everyone involved in the website that has something to do with the product, the website in general, um, or is just serving the website um, to some degree, right? So you want to get everybody in there. If you're going to do this digitally, I like to use the tool called Miro. Miro is great, M-I-R-O. It is really, really great for um, collaborating on these types of uh, um, projects. So I would um, say, yeah, use, if you're going to do this digitally, use Miro plus um, Zoom or whatever other um, meeting app that you like to use. And if you're going to be in person, just make sure everybody has their utensils, right? A pad of post-its, something to write with. Um, it's best to use a whiteboard because a whiteboard, you can stick those post-its on really easily and they kind of stick there. Um, the blank wall, um, it can be a little iffy depending on that wall. But um, either way, they both work pretty well. So um, do the best you can. And then uh, be sure to send all your research to the team beforehand, including the persona. Each session, should, should under, each session should understand the persona before the start of the meeting. So um, each person in this session, they need to understand who the persona is um, and they need to understand all of the research before they reach that meeting. Um, once everybody's in this meeting, you want to get everybody riled up, everyone ready to go. But then also kind of cool everybody down and get them in the mode of being this persona. So what I like to do is have everyone close their eyes and think about a day in the life of this persona. How does she wake up? What does she do? How does she get to work? What kind of car does she drive? What does she eat for breakfast? These are the things that you want to think about. These are, um, you want to actually put yourself in your persona's shoes, all right? Be sure to think about the problems that arise before and after using your product and service. And um, once you open your eyes, dive right in, right? So get right to it. Get everybody that's uh, supposed to be on um, each part of the, the journey. Make sure that they're, they're taking part. Make sure that everybody is uh, writing down ideas and, and thinking about this persona. Next, you're going to want to figure out the stages, right? So what are the stages of the journey that the customer is going through? Um, you want to try to think about the process that they go through offline as well not just online or on the website and sometimes we just think about just the website but it's not always just the website um, you want to remember to use the data from the research that you found and created to create these stages now a lot of the times depending on your niche the stages won't change too much maybe a little bit from client to client or um, from business to business but normally they're going to stay the same and so what you're seeing here is um, this is from an e-commerce shop, right? So you have awareness, like that means you're aware of the problem or the product that can solve this problem. Uh, search, you're gonna actually search um, for solutions to this problem. Comparison, you're gonna compare uh, the new solution to the old solution, right? Or to a different solution. And then you have purchase, which is you have to go through that actual purchase process. You have delivery when you go to the actual delivery process. And you have post purchase when you actually go through the post purchase process, which may deal with emails or um, some sort of uh, direct mail. Maybe um, there's all different types of post purchase, and it might be that how you uh, do returns as well. That's also purchase purchase. Post purchase. So um, all of these things come into play when you think about the stages. Um, and really, when you think about your, your persona, you want to think about like what is it that they're going through and how did they get there, right? So um, I think about when what was the last th thing that uh, I purchased. And so me and my wife, we were looking for a chair. Uh, we decided to replace the bookshelf that we had with a chair, uh, an accident chair. And so we, so we agreed. And so she went hunting. She went hunting for a chair. We couldn't agree on any of her picks, right? So it was either too big, too small, not the right color, or the right price. Um, so we went to the outlet furniture store and still couldn't find anything. Then I went on the hunt and I sent her a bunch of options. Still nothing. Um, finally, she stumbled upon a great chair at the right place from our favorite furniture store. Um, and all I had to do was drive 20 minutes up to pick it up the next day 
and let me tell you it's all worth the drive because it looks beautiful in our living room now right um but we did have like a little random scratch on it um but it wasn't such a big deal we used a little bit of leather lotion that cleared it right up um so it wasn't a big deal you can see just through that little story all of the different stages that i went through the awareness stage the search stage how we went through that big search process the comparison stage how we compared it to other um chairs that we had already seen um and this one was clearly the the winner um, and then the purchase process, which was fairly easy, and delivery, which was uh, I had to go out and use my car to go and pick it up. It wasn't just delivered to my home. And the post purchase of, you know, we had a little bit of a, a snafu there, but it was cleared up right away. So those are the things you want to think about when uh, you're building out your stages. And then we have here the layers of empathy. So this is what I call layers of empathy. This goes underneath your um, stages. And this is where you add all of the data and research that you've gathered, gathered on your customers. You want to be sure to add your analytical data points, um, add your customer research as well. So we have two sections there you see underneath data analytics and customer re research. You want to add those two uh, points there. When speaking about the customer, it's best to use I sentences. Like, I'm frustrated that I can't get good cream that helps with my son's eczema. That is an I statement. It's not, oh, the customer is frustrated, right? So you want to look at all of these things through the lens of the customer. So let's look at our layers here. So first we have goals. And you want to think about what are the goals of your customer persona, right? Um, then we have pains. What are the pain points your customer persona is going through? Then we have touch points. Is it a blog, search result? ad or email that brought them there and then we have channels what specific channels did they go through to reach this stage um, was it facebook was it an email campaign then we have feelings what are they feeling as they go through this stage customer thoughts what is your customer persona thinking here this is a good time to go through your research as well data analytics um, you want to add some supporting data from your analytics research that supports your insights customer research you're going to add links to data from your research that supports these insights. And you have ideas and opportunities. And this is the fun part, right? So this is where everybody can really get innovative. This is where you want to start to look for ways to delight. This is where you can start to fix things within the funnel, right? Within those stages. So this is how you can um, really innovate um, and make sure that your customer persona is being taken care of at every stage. What can be improved here, right? Are there any bugs or any friction? Those are the things that you want to add to that ideas and opportunities section. So here's an example. Um, I didn't put everything in here. So uh, we're only going to talk about the goals, pains, and touch points. And actually, we're not, we're not even going to talk about all of those. I just want you to see uh, what it looks like at a, as a, at a finished stage. Um, once everybody puts their post-its up, we come up with... Um, uh, the right one we come up everybody kind of reads through it we make sure that we have the right uh, bit of text for each one of these different uh, sections here and so this is how we ended it up right so we're only going to go through the goal section so we have here uh, my son needs better eczema skincare at the awareness stage um, that is a goal um, at the search stage um, we have the goal of defined eczema skincare that helps my son and if you hear we are using the words my and I'm in all of these that means that we are talking from the customer's mouth not just at the customer in the comparison stage we have the goals of to check if this is that this new brand is better than the one I'm using for my son now the goal with the purchase is to test new brand skincare cream and last um, the goal of what delivery is to receive new skincare cream in no more than a week, right? So these are the things that we know that the customer are going through. These are the aspirations that they have through each uh, part of that stage. And if you look through the pains and the touch points, you can see the exact same thing, right? So these are the things that um, Sarah Gonzalez is going through. Um, and these are the stages, right? So it's it's uh, this is how I will put this together. This is how I put it together in the past. Um, you can use different templates and other ways to put this together, but to me, just getting out, getting this out in a Google Sheet just makes it very easy to read and easy to update. 
So let's put this all in action, right? So after the workshop, you're gonna add all the information to it in a PDF and send that to the group, right? So you wanna make sure everybody has that PDF and everybody has a copy of it. Um, if you need somebody to go and design it up to make it look nice, do that to make it so that when they put it up, it's something that they can look at very easily and understand it very easily. And also you wanna make sure that this is updated on um, really like a quarterly basis, right? So. You want to make sure you update that uh, that customer journey map. Customer journey map is a great way to innovate. It's a great way to delight your customers. Um, it's a great way to find new ways to delight their customers, right? Find new ways to innovate. Find new features. Um, how can we do things to make, to make this better? How can we make the brand better? How can we make the business better? This is how you make better business decisions, okay? Um, so be sure that every part of the organization has a copy of the customer journey map and they print it on their, print it on their and post it on their wall. Um, they get it. Everyone should get an email, not just the people that was in the meeting, but everyone that's a part of the business should have this posted up. Tell them to take a picture of it so that you know this there and that they're using it on a daily basis. All right, so let's recap. First, create a persona. Remember to use only one persona for each journey map. Second, set up a customer journey map workshop with the leaders of your organization. Third, take everyone's final ideas and create the base customer journey map PDF and share that with the entire organization. Fourth, review and update the journey map as much as possible. Find ways to innovate and delight your customer persona. This is all very important. Um, Thank you so much for taking the time out to listen to me speak about this and blab about this. Hopefully you take customer journey maps seriously and you uh, go on a journey of customer journey maps. All right. If you have any questions, you can always reach me at anthony at 92 dreamcom And once again, thank you.